planning events and services. It's usually easier to plan an event or service as a group rather than leaving it all to one person. If so, decide who will plan the event. This could be your whole committee or it could be a smaller subgroup. A subgroup could be made up of committee members, but it could also include staff, volunteers or people who use your services. And once you've set up your group, then agree how often the group will meet. The first thing to think about when you start planning is purpose. Be clear about the purpose of your event or service and how your idea is linked to what your community has told you is important. Think about what is the event for and why do you want to do it? For example, a community celebration to celebrate and share your culture or a service for migrants who are isolated to help them make friends. What do you want to change? For example, people will have more understanding about our culture or people will make friends and be more connected. These are called outcomes and for more information on outcomes, see module four. And also think about a name for your event or service. What will you call it? Think about who your event is for. Who's your main target group? Who do you want to attend? Be clear and specific. For example, Eritrean refugees and asylum seekers living in Glasgow or asylum seeking men living in the northwest of Glasgow or all migrant communities in Scotland. Communicate this clearly in your publicity. This includes what your publicity says, but also how you get it to the people you want to see it. Where are the places that people go and the places that people use where you can advertise your service or activity? So now think about what you're going to do. For example, delivering a community celebration to bring people together or delivering 10 weekly activity sessions for your members. These are called outputs and for more information, see module four. For a formal event or an ongoing service, you may need a programme telling people what's happening. For example, introduction and welcome, speaker, discussion groups, feedback session, next steps and lunch with the relevant times for each session. For a less formal event, you'll still want to have a rough idea of what will happen and in what order. For example, music from 7 to 8, food to 8 p.m., music from 8.30 to 9.30. Also, think about how many people you hope will take part. This will affect your choice of venue and it's also important for health and safety. Now let's think about when and where. When are you going to do it? Consider the date, the time and how often. Is it a single event or is it a regular activity or service? It's important to know this from the beginning so that you can plan when you're booking venues, recruiting staff and volunteers, and when you're drawing up your budget. Where are you going to do it? What venue will work best for your community? And think about the size, the layout, how easy it is to get to, whether people already know the venue. Think also about what days, times and venues will suit people best and try to avoid picking dates and times when you know that people will not be able to attend. For example, if you want women to come along, you might need to avoid school pickup time. If you have an event in the winter, consider whether people will be happy to come out on a dark evening or if they'd rather attend a daytime event at the weekend. And also take some time to think about what might stop people from taking part. Consider the time and the date. The venue, is it known to the community? Is it easy to get to? Childcare, will some people not be able to attend because of childcare? Are there certain days that might be easier for people with childcare responsibilities to attend? Or could you provide childcare at your venue? Language barriers, do you need to provide interpreters? Do you need to translate the posters? Travel expenses, will people be unable to take part due to travel costs? Is there anything that you can do to help with this? Transport links. Is it easy to get there and home again when your activity and event is finished? Lack of information. How can you get information to people about how they can attend? You may not always be able to address all these issues, but you want to at least think about them and think about what you can do to help. Once you've made a basic plan for your event or service, then draw up a budget. And if you need some support with this, then have a look at module seven. Make sure you include all the relevant costs associated with the event. So this could include hall hire, food, transport, entertainment, publicity, volunteer expenses and sessional staff. If you already have the funds for this event, then great. 
If not, then you'll have to start looking for funding. So see module six for more information. You may also be able to get some support from other organisations by asking them if they could help or if they want to deliver the event together with you, so working in partnership. You could also ask local businesses if they will help support your event. For example, a local shop may be able to give you a discount or make a donation 